Hi, Hi Robert. How are you? Okay. How are you? Not too bad. Good trip. Yes, not too bad. Reasonable day again. How do you like the look of the new cages? Well, I think they're very nice. It'd be nice if we get rid of that orange netting. Yeah, I made a bit of a boo-boo there. I should have got it black, really. Yeah. I used to work for Ian on the road. I was Jethro Tull's tool manager. At that time, I had a very young family, and uh, I used to miss them quite a lot. And uh, I felt that I should be spending more time at home. So I was looking for something um, completely different, really, where I could be with my family. And at that time, Ian had recently bought this estate and, so, and just started in the fish farming. So I went off and did a year's course at Agricultural College and then came up here. And at that time, there was just one cage of fish in the lock there. Do you miss the rock and roll business? No. <laughs> We've got three or four sites now, and I really oversee everything when Ian's not here. We're almost halfway through an expansion programme. We've set up two new freshwater sites this year and one new seawater site. By the end of next year, we should be doubling our production of salmon for the market, which will be about 200 tonnes, and producing half a million smolts. Right, Rob, we've got a couple of uh, applications that come through to me at the house. Yeah. People interested in an Oh, yeah, I know, that, I know that girl, so we could... Um, I could have a word with her, see what she's looking for and see if she's suitable. That's right, because, I mean, again, it depends. I mean, presumably she's looking for something full-time. You can explain to her sort of what the, the potential might be. And this this one, one is... is uh, he's 34, is he, from Achna Clerk? Yeah, he's got a degree in agriculture. That's right. And he's got nothing, no background at all in fish farming, but I spoke to him on the phone yesterday. As he puts it, he's only 100 yards up the road. He's actually the fourth house down in the Crofting Township, so he's probably mm. only a couple of hundred yards actually away from the site. Right, exactly. So, that from an emergency point of view, even if he's off duty, he's obviously going to be very close to deal with things. And if he does have an agricultural degree, presumably some practical experience to back that up, he may be of the right sort. We always set off by trying to advertise any local job locally. Where you've got a site manager, he's got to have at least two or three years practical experience of running a fish farm. The chances are he is going to come from somewhere else. Maybe not from England, but probably somewhere else in Scotland. But coming in behind all the time to train as site managers uh, for our expanding sites, our increasing number of sites, then obviously we're trying to get the local people to do the job. If you can catch them before they're unemployed, before they're on the dole, catch them before they even leave school, and if possible, persuade them that fish farming isn't just a a hundred quid a week plus bonus as a, as a job. It's actually a career. I mean, hopefully fish farming on the West Coast is here to stay. It is a career future for a lot of people who are currently still at school wondering what to do. The thing that most people find slightly amusing is the idea that somebody who's been involved in rock and roll and spent time treading the boards and leaping up and down in front of 10,000 people a night or whatever it might be, should be doing something seemingly totally opposed, not just as a hobby, but as a serious pursuit. However, I mean, having been doing it now for seven years, um, I don't think it's actually so very different at all. I mean, I always think that farming salmon is pure rock and roll. I mean, it's... Uh, Instead of having a production manager, you have a, a farm manager. Instead of having a road crew, you have your husbandrymen who are out there working on cages. It has the same sort of glamour and excitement and bustle about it, and the same degree of risk at the end of the day.
guess that we will always be the archetypal underground group, which is what we were when we started. And apart from really a brief period in the late 60s, early 70s, where we were, if you like, a pop group, in the sense that we were very much top 20 with singles and albums, we've, most of our career, which is now 18 years or whatever it is, we've been an underground group. I mean, we still play to, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 people or whatever we've got and do major events, but you ask the man in the street and they might, some people might have heard of us, some people haven't. I think that's great. It's nice to, to be able to play both ends, you know, to be somehow anonymous and, and yet when it suits you, you can go out and uh, have people stand up and applaud.